back to creating. That is a video on simulation. I don't know if the bending is bad. We can just go through the simulation from scratch. Uh, however, we are using a uh, file uh, upload to the normal place, and we have it upload. Uh, we have a file supplied. I'll you know, just drag drop. It is an F3D and has quite a bit of it already set to go. Uh, just wait for it to go. And if you want to see it again, I calm down in here. It disappears. Uh, because this is a native file, it's more of an archive file. It should bring everything with it that we need. Double click to open, close the data panel. Um, sorry, I modeled this in a strange way, and it's better to look at it like this. So start with the left view. Uh, if you find yourself facing the other way, you can use these little arrows to rotate the part. Uh, try and finish with the, again, it might be looking right. What I'm after is actually to have the double hold uh, version on the right. Let's get rid of here. Pick the left in that case. Um, we're not going to do any design here. Uh, if you want, there's a sketch driving all this. You can fiddle around with the uh, values if you wish. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go straight to the simulation workspace. Um, because it is an archive file, it should show up uh, preset to go. Again, it'll probably rotate around to look the other way. Put this bending mode on the far right. I want it to match. Uh, my intention, I'm going to go from left to right here, sorry, so I'm sitting, sitting backwards. So go to the left. Uh, if you wish, you can have a look in here. Uh, you should be seeing uh, 10 kilonewtons. 10 kilonewtons pulling uh, all together, all down here. That should be force per entity. So good job we looked, say okay. Check the other guy. You can just uh, double click this to edit the guy. Let me see here 10,000 newtons, 10 kilonewtons. But this is at 90 degrees right across the top. It's, so this is going to put this plate in bending. The plate is identical to the first one. So we'll be using that to our advantage. Uh, underneath everything is just locked to the universe. This is ultra realistic as if it's clamped into. Uh, an immovable object. Um, it'll give us a good idea of what's going on, but it will not be ultra realistic. Uh, bases tend to always have some movement, uh, but we'll be able to get our ideas out of this. What we're looking at here is six plates large hole, small hole, large hole but offset, nasty notch right to the middle. Large hole with two small holes. Uh, we're talking about guiding the flow lines here and how that reacts, or if it does. Then the large hole center again, but in bending. Let's run the study. Let's just, sorry, before we do that, let's have a look at everything. Materials, uh, they're all steel, generic steel. Um, and we're looking at ultimate tensile strength, not yield. So if we see a safety factor less than one, it means it's ruptured. Keep that in mind. Constraints, uh, we can open them up to have a look under load case. That's the fixed again and the loads that we just investigated. Uh, keep in mind, I did turn on force per entity. It's an error at the top. Nice, gravity's not going to have a huge effect, so we'll ignore that. Everything looks fine. If we want, we can run contacts I did it before. Nothing's touching, so it's not much use. We can look at the mesh if we wish. Um, depending on how you've got things set up, it usually is going to ask to regenerate the mesh. It's not a big deal. I'll just have a quick look at the mesh. Now, fusion is quite a good measure. Um, and you'll notice here that it's tight around the, s the smaller the arc, the smaller the circle, tighter the mesh. What's controlling this? Let's look under settings. Under, uh, I've got 
remove rigid body modes turned off because it runs cloud. Mesh, advanced. That should be fairly standard, except I've turned down maximum turn angle on curves and degrees with curve mesh elements. What this means is that the curve itself, the, the change in geometry, which is also running KT, will increase the number of mesh, or the size, uh, decrease the size of the mesh, or increase the number of mesh elements closer to KT. So this is what we want. It saves us doing local mesh controls so much. Say OK. Or cancel. Now, while we're at it, the problem with that, that problem with that approach is curves get tensor mesh, but flat edges don't. See, this is quite tight in this notch here. There is a local mesh control control in that. So, let's keep an eye on that. And it's over those edges, so those four edges are. If you want, double click, have a look. But we are, it is active. That controls the mesh in the notch. Go back to our normal orientation. Everything looks good. Now we're seeing this pre-check is green. Uh, solve is our next option. If you want, you can look at displays. See, they're all fully fixed. Solve. Uh, we're going to wait for this to run. Um, because it's good for us. If you want to open up that, uh, what would you say, detail, keep an eye on it. Uh, you'll see it goes through sequentially. Now, I'm not spending a lot of time doing, dealing with reality here. Um, we just want to draw some conclusions from the simulation uh, between the relative strengths and weaknesses of each approach between these six points. And now we hurry up and wait. Noticing, sorry, well, we're at this 100%, was it 6? See, you can have this run in the background. Uh, to get it back, you have to open the data panel, open it up again. You can also see job status. Close the data panel. And I'm just checking to see if I have adaptive turned on. No, so it's just working away. Uh, this is basically runs by the solution as it goes through. If it finds it's causing errors or going off kilter, it'll start to re uh, remesh for better answers. But we have it turned off. That's fine. Drop status. No, oh, and it is done. And there's our results. Now, depending on how you've got your fusion set up, the default is to show this results. Sort of a standardized uh, advice panel, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, it gives you some recommendations. And it's not bad. Uh, deformation scale, uh, all this stuff is fine. If you want to turn that off, just toggle it on to not show automatically. I don't mind seeing it. It gives you this nice red <laughs> 0.17. You have rupture. Um, let's have a look. First, let's just have a look at displacement. What is displacing most? We have these results here. Uh, we can take them off or toggle them on and off by just hiding the max. This is total, uh, meaning just a, a, like an algo, uh, a collective movement. Uh, what is going on here? 
the bending is moving the most. You would expect that to correspond to the highest stress. And the lowest safety factor. No surprises there based on that. Let's start comparing these together. Uh, if the loads get in the way, you can hide them. Uh, you can also hide min max. You can put your own point probes, reactions, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we don't need slice planes because it's quite thin already. So on and so forth. Uh, I'm just going to decrease the last size of the browser here. Let's have a look what we would expect to see. The model components we might like to see. The centered wall and bending is quite high. Now, if we want to see kind of how it's really bending, we can increase the deformation by just the times five, which really <laughs> goes crazy. But it does show us the tendency of the deformation, which is linked to stress and therefore to safety factor. Bending is moving the furthest. We assume that this has the highest stress, and in fact it does. Bending is bad. Now, let's hide that guy for now. Look at the remaining parts. Go through our plates one at a time. I'm going to put the deformation back to, say, adjust it. Or even if you want, actual or undeformed. I usually find adjusted times a half is actually kind of what I end up using most of the time. If you want, sorry, if these loads get in the way, you can uh, sort of painful, you can always hide them. It's good to see them, I think. Um, don't worry about this one being three, it's just when you select them, they tend to multiply it. So, what we have here on the biggest hole centered, we have this high the safety factor point, or if you want to think of it the other way, low stress. Let's get this. Uh, right now it's quite a big um, broad selection which is based on everything visible the notch. Let's hide everything but the first one. We see the highest stress where we would expect at the thinnest portion of the plate beside the hole. Now one thing we can do is actually move these around to see uh, general trends of the stress flow, uh, which corresponds nicely to flow lines in the part. You see here what's going on. So, no surprise, there's high stress along where the flow lines tend to be congregated by the hole itself. The hole's quite big, and we end up with a safety factor kind of around point well, one. Almost exactly. Let's have a look where that is. Hold down. Predicting. <laughs> there it is. A very tiny failure right there. This is time for increased resolution of the mesh. Make sure we actually do have a failure here. But this would have a rupture right here. This would be the beginning of a crack. We increase the load a little bit more. We might end up with the through failure. You can see how it flew out from the edge of the circle through the thin part again, as we would suspect, and also beginning from the curved all not from the outside edge. Again, thanks to our flow lines, you see it kind of strange pattern and stress. Layer on increases kind of around. Importantly, the last part to get filled in is actually kind of material shielded by the hole. Interesting. Let's have a look at the next one. Tiny hole. Same pattern, just smaller. Now, let's see the safety factor comparison. So if I pull down to two, you can see the small hole has much less material in high stress. And as we pull down to about one, there is no part here that's even danger in danger of being rupturing. That doesn't happen until uh, 
about 1.3. If we want to see exactly, just hide that guy. We can see 1.34 is where it starts. Nice. So small hole is good. Next, offset hole. Now, as we would expect, minimum safety factor is low. This would rupture. And if we want to see the deformation tendency, we'll increase the adjustment. See, it's thinning out. So this is a combo of bad things. As it gets thinner, there's less material to take the load. So that's sort of nice. And we would get ruptures all the way through here. Once they join, arguably, we'll be ruptured through. But does that happen at less than one? Yes, about. So this would break. What happens after that would be a dynamic problem. This would increase the stress over here, bend it further, and we might end up with a decrease in the uh, safety factor out here through to one, and this whole part might fail. Let's compare these two together. So potentially the offset hole has already ruptured before we start to even develop a crack in the large centered hole. This is nice. Let's hide the next one and turn on the watched. No surprise here. Way before anything happens, this starts rupturing. So around one for the play of the hole. We already have a good rupture going in the notch. It's not good. So notch is bad. You can see the deformation is quite a bit more as well. We want to see exactly what that is. Displacement. It's uh, about a third, almost a half a millimeter at the top corner here. Whereas over here, let's add, just ask for a point probe. The deformation is about a tenth of a millimeter, so quite a bit less. To get rid of that, just can't delete that. Notch is bad. What about the notch versus the offset? Let's go back to safety factor. And if we hide the notch, we can see the minimum here 0.39 versus 0.2. This one is bad at the notch really builds up faster though. However, what we notice here is when we get to this point, if there's ruptures, we end up, essentially end up with a notch, well rounded notch, which should then spread slower. You see this safety factor kind of really spreading out very quickly here. Uh, bad news, uh, we'd expect a failure very quickly on the highly notched part. No surprise. Now, let's compare the two, the large hole and the large hole with the flow line guides. It's a difference in the safety factor. About the same, 0.989 and 0.977, so almost identical. Let's have a look. Turn this around a bit so we can see them at once. Maybe. Sorry, fiddling. Probably should have put these close. Notice the behavior that we were paying attention to before. We had this area which was in a way shielded from the flow lines by the big hole. And we see that by putting the holes there, it doesn't really do anything. Um, Orlov has this idea which you can use uh, small dotted holes to guide flow lines. It, it is correct. We're not arguing about that. You can see here that each hole then has progressively another shielded area. Uh, this uh, is a really can be a useful thing. It's not very common to have to put loads of holes together, especially big, small, small. But one thing you can do is even though these parts are not in bending where you have that empty unstressed center fiber. Even so, if you put a large hole in the middle of a tension plate, like which this is, you do protect center points from, or shield, or 
Let me hide those close by center parts from excessive stress. Uh, another way to look at this is actually to go the other way. What parts are shielded by the two walls? We see about the same, a small deviation in the pattern of the stress, of course. But this would give us an idea of where we would normally be putting. If we have to put in some extra holes, we're clearly going to put them in the center, fairly close to the big one. Which at first is counterintuitive, but then once we look at flow lines, it starts to make more sense. Now, last but not least, the bent part. These two faces, these two uh, plates, sorry, are the same. Except one is now bent, the other one's stretched, tensioned. The difference in the stress is significant. Uh, our lowest safety factor goes away to 0.17 as opposed to about 1, which just been tension. Uh, the deformation is quite a bit more. So we're up to 2.5 millimeters. If we go to actual, we can even see that. It's quite a bit of deformation. This would bend quite a bit, uh, visibly bent under load. And the stresses are, as we would expect, quite a bit of stress on the outside fibers. Interestingly, though, what happens with the hole actually tries to, well, kind of, again, protects the upper part from the typical bending stress. So if we pull this uh, low stress away to have a look, we see it kind of wrapping around the hole. Flow lines are complicated in bending. Um, it's not really worthwhile to try and figure out exactly what's going on with flow lines in bending. However, this, by examining these diagrams, you can kind of get an idea of where the flow lines are going. By just looking at where the stress kind of starts. Down on the corners, are, well, no, no surprise there. And then works its way up the sides. Starts the encounter of the KT from the hole. And then works its way past that up to the edges again. It's still in bending, but because of the whole pattern has become complicated. And there we go. Hopefully, after all that blathering, uh, this maybe aids us in trying to visualize what things are doing, what holes do in plates, where to put a hole, or make it as small as we can, right? Don't use notches unless you're in scene. And if you can put, if you do need extra holes, you can put them near the big hole in a line of the force, or with the force. Um, probably won't have much difference overall. However, Marlov is in fact correct, of course. The, you can use this to guide the flow lines around holes and around KT inducing events in the geometry of the part. Feel free to just fiddle around with this more. Uh, the next step would be to finish results and experiment with, for example, uh, managing things you could go into with that adaptive mesh refinement. Uh, medium's probably enough. And von Mies is fine. Uh, I usually tend to use von Mies, but displacement is also not a bad thing to use to control. Um, I wouldn't go above, yeah, it's high for them is six. Uh, anything more than that, you're going to be kind of wasting your time. Uh, it'll also take hours on the server. Medium is fine for quite a, well, most things, low even, just to get a feel for what's happening. Uh, another thing to try is adapting the mesh a little bit and can play around with these details. Uh, so for example, scale mesh per part, if you turn that off, it's over the whole assembly, not per part, then you can introduce things like absolute size. If you want a more consistent mesh, ignoring the KTs. It's entirely up to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and back to you.